So here I am tonight in the editing bay, sitting down. I'm working on uh, technology in the fire service classroom and the promotional video for it and the actual, um, not really programming, but the actual video I'm going to use to introduce myself for the presentation. So I've already got the, uh, the track loaded into PowerDirector. I brought it into PowerDirector because Windows Media, Windows Movie Maker really wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. It had a lot of clicky, bumpy, and jumpy videos, so I'll kind of go over PowerDirector with you guys to kind of give you an idea of how it works. It's a pretty reasonable program. I'll have to price it out and get that information to you guys later on, but I use PowerDirector as my go-to mainly. If I've got some really simple webinar video to master, I'll go through and I'll load it into Windows Movie Maker and do it there. Other than that, I generally use PowerDirector because it's my go-to tool. So this is my editing bay where I do all my work. You can see I've got my laptop in the middle. I've got two monitors off to the side. This device here is an encrypted hard drive with my USB hub sitting next to it. <clears throat> And then I've got my GoPro camera here hooked up, ready to go. I've got various other tools. I've got a clicker for moving my presentations forward. I've got my laptop there in the center so I can lay out the different screens across all three screens at the same time. As you can see, I've got a browser up in both windows to the left and to the right. And I've got my desktop there in the center. I've got two keyboards. I've got a keyboard there on the laptop itself and I've got a keyboard separately off to the side I've got a wireless mouse as well so this is where I do all the work for the streaming media systems and for the Academy you can see here is my power director main screen I've got a number of different toolbars a number of different places I can click in the screen in order to do things you can see my cursors over here so the current audio quality or the current video and audio is there. So in order to toggle it forward, I hit the space bar. Although I'm a bit rusty in those, that's one of my research focus areas. In general, I focus on the use of technology in the fire service or EMS to streamline work tasks to get immediate feedback and big data on the service level. Technology in a fire service classroom starts with an idea. How can we make fire service education better for our students? How can we leverage technology in the classroom to accomplish this goal? So what I'm doing now is I'm going through, I'm reviewing the audio to make sure I didn't say anything weird throughout the class. I'm going through removing any of the major uhs or ums or clicks or bumps or any kind of audio issues with that. And then I'm actually laying down looking at laying down the audio and the video into the same track so I recorded this in zoom teleconferencing so most of the audio and the video is all linked up together I think for the next session instead of doing a straight screen share I'll actually go ahead and add in a webcam video that way people can see me talking on the webcam for me my experience in distributed fire service education started with getting instructor one material out to a group of diverse students in Morgan County Indiana we had many different shift schedules, departments, volunteer versus career students, and many other different variables in general involved in reaching students effectively. So it started with an idea, a traditional lecture backed by teleconferencing software to allow students to attend from the comfort of their own stations or homes. As you can see, I try to keep the audio breaks down to about four to five seconds. So if there's a longer break than four to five seconds between slides, I generally try to edit that out as much as possible. So I can turn the gain up, I can turn the gain down, I can add in an audio track if I wanted to, I can add in titles, I can add in a lot of different materials here at this point in time to put this into perspective. So now let's talk about transitions, let's talk about editing video. So at this point in time, I've got some parts of the video that need to be edited out and chopped out. So I'm going to go back to the last blank part of the screen, and I'm going to scrub forward. Overall, the Instructor One hybrid program has had 21 students, 13 completions, or a 62% completion rate. 
with all students passing the state certification exam on the first attempt. I'm going to stop right there and I actually want to split this out. So I'm going to right click, hit split, and that's going to drop a marker where I want to split the rest of this out. Now the rest of this audio, the rest of this video is kind of junky and weird. So I'm going to scroll back and I'm actually going to remove this from the timeline. So after I've removed it from the timeline, I'm going to scrub back to the beginning and I'm going to run the video in its entirety before I move on to the next part of the process. So now I've got my video processed. I've gone through, I've looked at the video. I have made sure the audio is clean. I've made sure the audio is clear. Let's see how long this video is so we get an idea of how much time we're going to need to edit it. Or not to edit it, but to put it into place. Generally, it takes me about 15 minutes for every 15 minutes I shoot. You can take up to 30 minutes depending upon how much editing I have to do. So this clip runs about 7 minutes and 43 seconds. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to produce the clip. So we're going to go up here to produce. I'm going to use the H264 AVC preset, which is an MPEG-4, 1280 by 720 at 30p, 16 megabit per second video, NTSC format. This format will encode MPEG-4 files. I'm going to encode to the default directory. It looks like I've got 869 megabytes to encode. It's going to take me... Not sure how much time to encode it, but according to this, I have 29 hours, 23 minutes, and 33 seconds left on the disk to record. So I'm going to start the process. It'll go to the producing screen, and it tells me that I have approximately 4 minutes and 3 seconds to wait for the video to process. So this process can take up to 3 hours for longer videos. It can take as short as five minutes for short videos. It just depends upon the amount of video you're trying to process. The video is done encoding now. It only took about five minutes, so we're going to go minimize power director and pull over a few elements into the screen. I'm going to go to YouTube real quick, get ready to upload this video. I'm also going to go find this video in the default location where it's stored. So that happens to be Documents, Cyberlink, PowerDirector 15, and it'll be Produce.mp4. So I've got two different videos here. I've got one that's 744 and I've got one that's 756. I'll drag that over here so you guys can see that. So I've already probably reproduced this file, but it was a good thing I went back through and checked it. So produce.mp4 is the one that was originally done. Produce zero was done back in February, so I'm gonna delete this file get rid of it. So this is the file I want to drag to YouTube. So I'm simply going to go to upload video. The video uploading screen is going to come up. I'm just going to basically drop and drag. The production screen pops up. It shows uploading. It looks like this video is going to take about two to three minutes to upload. So I'm going to set some very basic parameters up here. I'm going to set this up as an unlisted video because I'm still producing it and I'm still working on it. You can see we're at 21 percent, 22 percent. 
about two minutes remain. So this this takes this process takes anywhere from five minutes to thirty five minutes, depending upon how big the video is, and that's depending upon the format you encode in and, and what kind of encoding format you use and how much information is there. So you can see it's only got about 55 seconds left, so we're going to stay here for now. YouTube is really nice because you can do unlisted stuff, you can do public stuff, you can do private stuff, you can do almost anything with it. And when I get actually done with uploading this, I'll show you guys a few basic features of YouTube that you can use to produce your own videos. So as you can see here, I've set my title up for Technology in a Fire Service Classroom. The video is now processing. It's got about 40 seconds left. There are various other things over here I can set on the side. I can set up a video thumbnail. I can set up a playlist. I can set up a premiere. I can go to translations and look at languages and things like that. I can go to advanced settings. And this is where I set up the specific digital rights and things like that. So. I can set up comments, I can look at ratings. This part of the screen here is most important. This part right here is called License and Rights Ownership. This is where you can actually set up what kind of license your videos are released under, whether it's released under YouTube's Terms of Service or the Creative Commons Attribution License. I use Creative Commons Attribution because it it's a non-commercial attribution license that requires any derivative works to maintain my original copyright and it also allows people to use these in open source formats. The video processing is done so I click done. That's going to give me the link so I can share this, I can embed this, I can email this at this point in time. I don't want to do any of that. I want to go to YouTube Studio Beta, which is where we'll go next. So this is YouTube Studio Beta. It kind of gives me information. It gives me my last video. The number one of last ten videos by views was the update that I did on February 10th. It's got 59 minutes watched, up 611 percent. It's got 55 views and the average view duration is 104. So I'll go to videos here just to show you what's on my video list. And you can see that I've got all these webinars, I've got the fire instruction promo, I've got all kinds of different stuff for technology in a fire service classroom, I've got the Instructor One series here. I've got a lot of different stuff in my channel that I use. So we can see here that this technology in a fire service classroom doesn't have a description. It's marked and unlisted and it's uploaded from March 16th. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go and actually play this video and make sure this video works on YouTube. I want to make sure the audio quality is what I expect, I want to make sure the video quality is what I want to expect, and I want to make sure that the video looks good and is produced properly when it was uploaded to YouTube. This is my kit page. It's where I have a compendium of all the equipment that I use to do streaming media production. So I've got my laptop, I've got my camera, I've got my Bluetooth wireless keyboard, I've got my Coolpix AW120 that I use for point and shoot and some video work. I've got my Galaxy Note 4 that I use to work on the YouTube, not the necessarily the YouTube videos, but to basically have a monitoring way to look at myself when I'm shooting my GoPro videos because there's an app for that that I can use to control the camera with. I've got two Acer G236HL 23-inch LED lit monitors, one on each side. I use Logitech S150 USB speakers. I use a Microsoft wireless mouse for my uh, laptop production. I use this Blue Snowball Ice condenser microphone, and I use a 2 terabyte external hard drive. I also have a Lenovo, or not a Lenovo, but a Logitech USB headset that you guys have seen me using throughout the Zoom teleconferencing. 
So I've got that as well. So this video will be processed completely on the iPad, or not on the iPad, but on the Mac, since I'm testing out some things with the um, GoPro for family vacation coming up. So hopefully you'll see this video shortly coming to a screen near you.